Have you ever wondered why everyone wants to be the next Bill Gates? Or why it is that we know so little about platforms like Facebook that we use every day? These questions are implicitly tied to two concepts in media, the black box and the aura. With the congressional hearings of Mark Zuckerberg still fresh in everyone's minds, one of the world's biggest black boxes is slowly being uncovered. That makes now a perfect time to talk about David Fincher's biopic, The Social Network. While many scholars have analyzed this film through different lenses, few have analyzed the black box and the aura of The Social Network. Fincher uses formal technique and the screenwriting of Aaron Sorkin to depict the social media black box the aura of the tech genius millionaire, and how those two characteristics define our relationship with pop culture giants like Zuckerberg. Before I get into my own argument, I want to briefly touch on two of the other critical analyses that have been written on this film, as they will become relevant later on. They are William Brown's Becoming Cinema and Michelle Schreiber's Tiny Life. Brown's argument takes issue with the work that is not shown in the film suggesting that its absences creates a very individualist picture of Zuckerberg that is ultimately inaccurate. More broadly, his idea is that films, especially in Hollywood, tend to avoid depicting the actual work that goes into the creation of something massive like Facebook. They don't show the hundreds of hours and workers that created the final product. To see what Brown means, let's look at this clip of the coding contest. Notice how in this scene, the programmers are minimized. We never learn their names or what exactly they are doing. Mark tries to explain it to us through Eduardo, but this dialogue is clearly more about his character. The most important problem here, according to Brown, is the lack of compensation for the coders. Sure, the prize is getting onto the Facebook team, but what does that actually mean? By now, Mark and Eduardo only have $19,000, and they're certainly not planning to pay that out to these coders. Instead, the coders are buying into the hype that they want to be a part of Facebook because it's famous now, like Zuckerberg. They want to be near this celebrity and are willing to work for little to no pay to get there. This is the problem Brown suggests, that the individualist portrayal of these characters can strongly influence lower level workers to work under minimal compensation for the chance to get to the top. However, I do think Brown's criticism is a little presumptive about David Fincher. I think for the most part, the lack of screen time for the coding and workers is very intentional. It's not that Fincher wants workers to forgo compensation in favor of that one shot at stardom. Instead, he doesn't want to show people working on Facebook as this adds to his thematic depiction of Facebook as a black box platform and of Mark Zuckerberg representing the aura. Schreiber's article involves an analysis of three films by David Fincher, Zodiac, Fight Club, and of course, The Social Network. All three, she argues, have significant messages about the corporeality vs. the materiality of the male body. So what does that mean? Well, I won't spend much time on Zodiac, but Fight Club affirms the importance of the material or real-world male body through the depiction of fighting and physical dominance. The social network goes the opposite direction, according to Schreiber. Whereas the macho ideals of society are merely under attack in Fight Club, the social network is a full refutation of them, where the corporeal or intellectual body wins the battle for dominance. I'm sorry, I don't have a robot. We can see this in the way Jesse Eisenberg looks. He's scrawny, short, and unathletic. Compare him to the Winklevoss twins and it's obvious that even one of them would lay him flat in a fight. But they aren't in a physical fight, they are in a battle over intellectual property. According to Schreiber, that's what makes the film such a powerful refutation of traditional masculinity. The Winklevoss twins are shown losing or struggling to keep up in many scenes, which shatters the societal image we have of the physically dominant male. This is starkly evident in the Henley Royal Regatta scene, where Fincher even uses a special lens to make the subjects look far away and diminished. With Brown and Schreiber in mind, we can now ask the following question. How does the refusal to show work and the dominance of the corporeal male body influence the portrayal of Mark Zuckerberg? First, let's establish definitions for two terms I've already mentioned. The first is the black box, and this one is fairly simple. It refers to any device or construct where the user only knows the inputs and outputs of the device, not its inner workings. Any piece of technology these days is like this. If the average iPhone user were to try and open it up and understand each part, it probably wouldn't go very well. And yet, we know what we put into this black box. Electricity, Wi-Fi, a SIM card, our personal data, etc. And we know what we get out of it. We can make phone calls, access photos and music, and many other things. All we don't know is what happens in the intermediate process to get us that output. The black box represents that hidden intermediate process. Next, let's talk about Walter Benjamin's notion of the aura. 
Walter Benjamin was a German media scholar whose 1936 essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Its Technological Reproducibility, changed the way people would think about media for decades. Suppose I were to ask you what this is. You would probably say, oh, that's the Mona Lisa, and you would be right, kind of. Even if you were to say, oh, that's a picture of the Mona Lisa, you would still only be mostly right. The reason for this is that you're actually looking at my digital filming of a digital image of the real Mona Lisa, meaning the original image has been reproduced at least two times already. Benamin's idea was that an image loses a certain intangible quality once it has been reproduced in some way. He called this quality, possessed only by the original, the aura. An object or image has the aura simply in virtue of its symbolic distance from the viewer, and this distance increases each time the piece is reproduced. This idea has aged incredibly well in the digital world, where image sharing and reposting has become so common that to see the real thing in real life would be incredible. At least, it would at first. According to Benjamin, human beings inevitably destroy the aura and its uniqueness by trying to get closer to it. And in doing that, in a tragic twist of irony, we no longer have that magical feeling we were trying to understand. Let's take a look at where these two concepts appear in the social network. If we go back to the coding competition scene, we can see the black box come into play here. As I said before, the coding itself is not shown in the scene. Instead, we see the bystanders, the reaction of the coders, their setup, and most importantly, Mark and Eduardo talking on the side. The movie refuses to let us into the world of the competitors. We only know the input, the time and effort they are putting into the competition, and the output, which is not the winning piece of code, but rather Mark's reaction to seeing the winning piece of code. This black box method of portraying the programmers also crops up in the recurring line throughout the movie. He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Is he? All we know about the meaning of that line is that the individual is intensely focused on some kind of programming that will output some part of Facebook, but everything else is left vague. But part of what makes this film so brilliant is the use of a very adept analogy for the whole black box nature of Facebook. This analogy, of course, is the final clubs. The process of getting into the clubs, as well as even what goes on inside of them, is a secret kept from the general public. We know the input for this black box are the freshman pledges and the university girls. The output are people like the Winklevoss twins, cultured, professional individuals who seem to embody the macho ideals of the traditional man. But unlike with Facebook, the viewer is let in on these black box through Fincher showing us the pledge process and the parties. These clubs represent a social parallel to the digital black box that is Facebook. The people who know nothing about it, like Mark, are as desperate to get in as the coders are to get into Facebook. Tell me this isn't about me getting into the Phoenix. We can see this parallel in the way we are introduced to both the final clubs and Mark's coding process at the same time, at the start of the movie. Fincher intercuts scenes of each process to make the comparison that much more evident. But perhaps the most interesting story point to note here is how Mark's trajectory of wanting the final clubs changes. By the end of the film, he's gotten very close to them through Edwarder and eventually Sean Parker, but he's left feeling empty and disappointed. To see why this is, let's return to the aura. Remember that it's a magical quality about an object or thing created by a symbolic or metaphorical distance from it. Humans try to understand or get closer to the aura, which inevitably destroys that aura when the distance is destroyed. This is exactly what happens to Mark by the end of the film. According to Aaron Sorkin's story, Mark started his entire project because he wanted in and was jealous that he couldn't get there. It was this distance between himself and the clubs that entranced him. And when he ultimately destroys that distance through meeting Sean Parker and comprehending these clubs, he realizes that the feeling is gone and they have been disenchanted in his eyes. In other words, this demonstrates how the final clubs are inhabited by both the black box and the aura. But Fincher also uses formal technique in his camera work in many scenes to remind us of the presence of the aura. The primary way he does this is by incorporating glass as a barrier in many of his shots. Glass perfectly represents the aura because while it allows us to see that thing we want to get close to, it also creates a sort of barrier. One of the most notable uses of glass is here, when we are taken through a wild secret party at the Phoenix Club. Glass doors recede out of frame to remind us that we are breaking through that barrier and decreasing the distance between ourselves and the clubs. The second scene where glass is used prominently is the confrontation between Mark and Eduardo at the offices of Facebook. This shot here is incredibly well composed. Notice three things about it. First, the use of a reflection to remind us that the glass is still there. Second, the imposition of these white pillars creates a very strong border that bars Eduardo from being near Mark in a visual sense. 
Finally, the sense of distance created by having Mark very small and centered in the frame creates a powerful metaphor for the distance between them as friends. To Eduardo, Mark now has a certain aura because of their distance. Eduardo breaks this distance when he eventually crosses over to Mark, but it is a shot filled with stress and tension, and it results in the shattering of their friendship. Yes. How about now? You still wired in? You issued 24 million new shares of stock. I think the most powerful argument Fincher makes in this film is how these material-oriented concepts of the black box and the aura can be adapted to our people-oriented society. We see the social adaptation of the black box in the final clubs, and we see the application of the aura to actual people instead of pieces of art. Let's return briefly to Brown and Schreiber. Brown, as I mentioned before, takes issue with the lack of actual work shown in the film, but I think Fincher intentionally does this to preserve the black box of Facebook. If we were shown the hours of coding and business deals that went, actually went into Facebook, we would know the inner workings of this construct. Now, why would that be a bad thing? Well, though I can't say there's a direct connection here, I think it has a lot to do with the aura. The existence of a black box seemed to indicate some kind of mysterious, unique quality that draws us towards these constructs. Well, uh, as you know, we had some new investors that have come What in. is this? Schreiber's argument hinges on the depictions of masculinity in Fincher's films. The dominant male in the world of the social network is not the one who's 6'5", weighs 220 pounds, and can row crew, but the one with the genius level intellect and the bright ideas. It's very similar to Fight Club's examination of masculinity, but with one major difference. This film is much more about celebrity status. Essentially, this means that the dominant male is measured by his fame and fortune. And in this case, that means the genius computer kid with the bright idea is now the celebrity. That idea of success, dominance, and celebrity status is heavily tied to the aura and how we can apply it to humans. While the masses may not try to create little reproductions of those aura-possessing individuals like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg, we do try to get closer to them, and eventually, to imitate them. This film perfectly explores these ideas of the black box and the aura in social context through the use of camera work, story points like the final clubs, and the hidden work of the coders. Fincher suggests that we try to get closer to the auras of these people the way Mark tries to get closer to the final clubs, or the way others try to get closer to him. The social network leaves us with a question. Given that Zuckerberg and the others found only disappointment when they removed that symbolic distance, should we really try and do the same? Hey everybody, Armchair Psychologist here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hopefully there will be more like it coming up. This is my first video for the channel, but I'd enjoy doing stuff like this, movie analyses, uh, reviews, just general talking about stuff. So stick around, and hopefully I will see you all next time.